tell everybody thank you so much for the prayers. We're hanging in there. Yeah, we're hanging in there, huh? Feeling a little bit better with the meds. Yeah, you are feeling better with the meds, huh? Okay. Okay, y'all. So I got back lab results, uh, radiology results. We're still waiting on valley fever. That'll be next week. Still waiting on the urinalysis. I'm sitting at my desk at my laptop. I know there's glare on my glasses, but I'm going to go through the notes with you guys because I don't want to forget anything. And so many of you are literally like as worried as I am. <laughs> so um, while I pull this up, I also want to say thank you for your generosity. Those of you who have sent us donations, I definitely didn't ask for it or expect it, but I'm so grateful. <laughs> Obviously, we had a very large, unexpected vet bill uh, yesterday for my son, but um, those of you who donated, thank you. You are helping with uh, his treatment, so I appreciate that. All right, so his blood work does indicate that his cardiac condition is progressing. Not really a surprise, we knew that. His murmur progressed from a 1-2 to a 3-4 over the course of a year. It's leaning more toward a 4 now, but this is exactly why we have that cardiology appointment in two weeks. So not much we can do about that right now. We see the cardiologist. We'll make a move from there. Um, his renal values uh, have increased. I'm a little bit worried about that, but pending the cardiologist appointment, the doctor wants to put him on Pimobendin, which is a heart medication. So the cardiologist will go ahead and take care of that and institute that. Again, we just gotta wait, but that's in less than two weeks. So, and he is currently on a cardiac diet, Hill Science Diet Senior Plus, it's a cardiac diet, but we might have to switch that up a little bit and start a renal based uh, diet for um, to improve to improve that his blood pressure was high but dr roach um kind of jokes that winston has white coat syndrome which happens to a lot of people as well it's like when you go to the doctor you're nervous even though like even if that thing's really like wrong or or whatever it's just like it's just nerve-wracking to go to the doctor and so your blood pressure will spike um he has uh, elevated liver enzymes, but doctor thinks that it might be from the meloxicam that he was on. We are ceasing the meloxicam and he will just be on the gabapentin pain meds. That's for nerve pain, like I discussed in my previous video. Um, Dr. Roach said that I can choose to do an ultrasound on the abdomen if I'm really worried about the renal levels. That's something that I'm interested in, but I wanna see how the cardiac appointment goes first. He, the, so the radiologist says that he does have IVDD in the neck, uh, intervertebral disc disease, very common in small dogs. Many dogs get it much younger, specifically dachshunds. They, they often have IVDD. It is showing in the neck. Dr. Roach thinks it's from the trauma, from the attack. When he was attacked on the neck, since he was ripped in half from armpit to armpit, the neck, all of that was flayed, and that's where the dog grabbed him. So no doubt from that trauma. Thank you so much, neighbor dog. Glad I sued you and I won that lawsuit. He definitely has IVDD in his neck. Um, she also said, Dr. Roach and I spoke about doing potential acupuncture, um, a holistic treatment, a, a, like a laser, a holistic laser treatment. So that's an option for that as well. I did get the x-rays back. I plan to show them in this video and discuss them a little bit. Um, from the radiologist, there are no aggressive bone abnormalities, so that's really good news. 
He does have moderate left-sided uh, cardiomegaly, megaly, cardiomegaly. I don't know how you say that. I'm not a doctor, but that means that, and like I discussed in my previous video, and I'll show the x-ray, on the left side of his heart, there are two small bulges, which indicates an enlarged heart. Again, this is no surprise because he does have the heart murmur and it is common in small dogs and he is 13, but there is no underlying degeneration and there's no evidence of congestive heart failure, so that's really good news. He does have a mild diffuse bronchial pulmonary pattern, but that's most likely age-related and unlikely to be a chronic underlying condition. He does have increased opacity um, within the cervical trachea. This is something he's had for so many years since he was like three. Tracheal collapse, that's another name for it. Tracheal collapse, again, very common with small dogs. Now for his leg, there is no reported evidence. They're, they're showing nothing in terms of the left pelvic lameness, there is no uh, disc herniation, compression, anything like that, but the doctor did think she saw the bone lesion. The radiologist is saying that there is no bone lesion. So it's good news that the radiologist isn't seeing anything other than the IVDD in the neck, but that makes me glad I started elevating his food and putting it up high. That way he's not like, you know, using his neck and bending down to eat. Okay, so let's recap without all this glare on my glasses. So what we are mainly looking at right now is Winston aging, but there are some things that we can treat and get under control. I am slightly nervous about the, the renal levels, the liver, but again, these are issues that we can come up with a plan. We need to see the cardiologist first, really, get an in-depth idea of how that heart is performing and what we need to do because in just the same as humans, your heart dictates everything else. So the doctor warned me yesterday, probably gonna have to get him on a heart medication. That's fine with me. Let's get him on a heart medication. Let's get this murmur under control. Let's stop the progression. If we get his heart under control, we can get everything else under control. So this morning, Winston ate his breakfast without me having to give the appetite stimulant. So that's really good news. He seems to be more comfortable with that gabapentin. That gabapentin is taking away the pain. He has more of an appetite because he's not as painful. He did have a normal poop today. I'm still looking at his stool because he has had some issues with diarrhea in the last month, although the last 10 days or so, it's, it's been much better. I'm watching everything <laughs> so diligently and like making notes. I did email, so Dr. Roach emailed me all of her notes, the x-rays, the radiology report and everything. She sent me a personal email. This is what I love about her and having such a close relationship with my veterinarian is first of all, she's not gonna bullshit me. She's gonna tell me everything. She She's going to tell me everything and worse because she wants to be honest with me and she wants to prepare me and she wants to make sure that I know all of my options and all of the potential side effects and issues and whatever that can come along with that. She lays everything out on the table for me. We are ceasing the use of the meloxicam, the anti-inflammatory, so he'll just be on the gabapentin. And I'm going to try and not give him that appetite stimulant unless he's still not eating. But so far, so good, because he seems to be more comfortable. 
We don't have answers on the lameness in the leg. So is it just osteoarthritis? And when he jumped off the couch and when he jumped off my mom's bed, like back in March, it's when you have osteoarthritis and you hurt a joint, especially like the left side of his body is the main attack side that he was attacked on. So that's where the nerve damage is. Like that's where the main damage is. So did he just, you know, he's flaring up the osteoarthritis when he jumps? We don't know. We don't have the valley fever results. We won't have them until next week. That is still a possibility. I am praying that's not, that's not the issue. He just has stuff going on now that he's aging. I'm trying to accept the fact and acknowledge that when a person gets into their 60s, because physiologically Winston's in his 60s, when a person gets into your 60s, you're gonna have stuff that comes up. You know, it's like, I just think about my mom and how healthy my mom is at 63 years old, but every now and then she has something come up. You know, she had something going on with her pinky. She, you know, she um, has, she had something uh, going on with her foot. You know, it's just, yeah, so you go in, you have a treatment plan, you take care of it, and then it heals and then you're good. So I'm trying to think about it like that. Like he's not three anymore. He is three plus 10. <laughs> And this is the path that we're on. After the cardiologist, shortly after, Dr. Roach wants to retest his liver and the renal levels, which I'm good with. And we are going to continue to go into the vet every six months. I'm glad that the x-rays were done on the heart and that two doctors were able to look at that the radiologist was able to look at that and then all of those notes then go to the cardiologist so they have everything that they need to further progress with testing and treatment for Winston. So I feel very confident about having a solid plan in place. Huh, Mama. <laughs> He's been following me around today because I'm since I'm feeling better today, since he ate this morning, like that made my day just start on a really good note. So I've been getting things, I had to run and go get groceries. I've been getting things done around the van, but he's been following me around like, mom, are we going, are we going, are we going? So tomorrow we're going to head out. I'm going to take Winston up to the Greer area. It's going to be like 70 degrees every day. Absolutely beautiful. We need to get out of the heat. I need to get my son out of the heat. I need to get out of the heat. We need to get to our second favorite place because Creed's our number one, but Greer's our number two. So we get to our second favorite place and just spend some time together, just the two of us, relaxing, gonna work on some videos, and then Winston can be active at his comfort level. That is the plan. I'm still concerned about Valley Fever. And obviously I'm, I'm, I'm worried about his health, but I'm trying, I'm trying to rein that in. I'm trying not to put that energy on him. Of course, I'm gonna worry. I don't want anything to be wrong with him, but I think with time, I will accept that um, he just needs a little bit of extra attention and care and, and love and support right now because he's aging and we're all aging. And this is just part of life. We're going to get through it together. We're going to get through it with you guys. You all make it. Um, I don't want to say easier, but it, it's better for me because I'm able to talk it out, get it all out, and you all send me so much kindness and love and support. And it is very helpful. It is very helpful. So keep it coming because we need it. And the cardiologist is in two weeks. So of course I'm going to keep you all updated on that, what happens with that. Because this journey that Winston and I are on is about all of us as a family, as a community. And I know how much Winston means to a lot of you. I know that some of you even follow us because of Winston and that is totally fair. That is totally fair. No hard feelings. <laughs> But you guys deserve all the updates, and so that's what's going on. Stay tuned, but we're gonna go on adventures this weekend. Get some fresh air, get out into nature, because nature is healing. 
and that's what we're gonna do. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch. I will see you next time.